Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mike. Today is the Crocheted with Care Wrap. A beautiful charity oriented project but also something that's really quite practical to give somebody that extra comfort they may want. And it's actually kind of a fun pattern. I found myself is that it kept me engaged and I actually have quite uh, a bit of a sample here to show you today. And uh, you can add pockets to this to make it a pocket uh, wrap if you wanted to. And you could actually have some fun with this particular design. So let's take a look at this diagram. It's on page number two. Page number two is where the action is and on the action this is actually kind of a lot of fun. So the repeat is from rows number two through five. So you're gonna see this particular double crochet and this double crochet. So this here is one color and then it picks up and it's a new color from here and so on. So you'll see it it's actually in sets of like four rows or for each color that you'll see. And you'll also notice that there looks like there's a step and that's because we're going to be using the back loop only when we go to switch over that color to give it that stepping look. Let's take a look at the sample and by the way if you'd like to change the size of this particular sample maybe you wanted a blanket you can just chain in multiples of three and then you'll have this particular concept as well. So multiples of three is the key answer. So here's my sample here. It's in rows of four. So four, 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 four. It's also in a color sequence. So if you turn it sideways like this you will see gray, white, blue, white, gray, white, blue. So then it will be white and then gray is next and then white and then blue. So that's how it's gonna work in this particular sample. Now what I want to do is keep an eye on these crisscrosses and to make sure that I get the same number of crisscrosses each time and where I was screwing up when I was screwing up is that I would forget that I would have to double crochet in between these crosses and so therefore I would end up with a stitch or two short because I was just kind of like watching TV. So make sure in between these crisscrosses when you're switching back to double crochet that you are going into a space in between. So I don't think there's a lot to discuss in this. As I told you it's a repeating of multiples of three. So three, three, three. When you're happy with it just stop and then you'll have this particular idea. So this is kind of fun and let's begin our journey. Let's begin our journey. You have a slip knot on the hook. You can either chain 60 to get the exact sample or chain in multiples of three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if you're doing this particular concept and you would like to change the size you can stop at any point or chain uh, 60. Let's move on to row number one. In row number one we have to get ourselves established so we're gonna go fourth chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one, two, three and go to the fourth and get the back chain of the fourth one back and you're going to double crochet. So then this chain here counts as a double crochet as well. So you're just going to double crochet in the back hump of the chain all the way across and this will be row number one. So eventually you'll get all the way to the other side and then that's it. So you're gonna turn your work and we're gonna begin row number two. So row number two through five is the repeat sequence on this. Let's begin row number two. To begin number two you're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four and that is your first treble that you have. So using over the next two you're going to go into the second one from there. So you skip the first one, go to the second and you're going to treble. And then come into the one that you skip. So wrap twice and just lean the project forward and access that stitch by just leaning it forward and treble there and this will create a crisscross. Now in this particular sample there is a chain one after that. You are going to then skip one stitch and then begin again. So you're gonna come officially to the third one. So wrap tw twice, go to the third one away and now come back just one and just lean it forward and get in there. Okay and then chain one after it. So skipping the next one so you're just using the next two after that. So come all the way to the third one and you're gonna do this all the way across. And this is row number two. So what you have to keep an eye on is that when we started this row is that we did not skip any chains or any row or any stitches and on the end of this we're not gonna skip any either. So just make sure there is a chain one that separates these crosses as you're going across except for the very last one to the edge. Okay, so I'm coming into the third one away. I'm crisscrossing. And then finally in the last turning chain here 
you're going to apply a treble. So just straight on down. So you're not chaining one after that last crisscross. And that's what it would look like. This is row number two. Turn to work and let's do row number three. Now it shows in the sample that you're doing a crisscross the way that it's working up. You can decide to do the crisscross any way that you want to but the next row number three is going to chain forward. That's your first treble. And what they're explaining to us is that we are going to um, go to the, see this crisscross? We're gonna go to the furthest one and we're gonna crisscross. And the pattern is telling us that the next crisscross is technically in the front here. So you can decide whether you wanna access it from the front. It's a little more tedious to do that but you can. So you can either come from the front and it will create this look. So it what, will, what this will do is it will create a zigzag line up here like that. If that bothers you and you wanna speed up then you can just crisscross in behind. So you, you can see it looks completely different. So you are the artist. You can decide what you would like to do. So I am going to follow exactly what the pattern is suggesting just to keep it real. So you access it from the front. That's the second time. And then you still have to chain one after that. And the, so you're coming to the crisscross. So come to the furthest one first. And then come to the one that you just skipped. And in this case it's from the front. So this is all what row number three is. And you can see that it will work out pretty awesome. Make sure that you do um, chain one after those. And I'll see you at the end of the row in just a moment. So I'm coming into the very last one before the edge and just make sure you do not chain one after this one and then just treble into the turning top of the turning chain itself. So don't go into a space, go right into a chain and that will keep your balance at the end. And that's what it looks like. Okay, so you can turn your work and let's begin row number four. In row number four we're gonna chain up three which will be your first double crochet coming out and then starting in these you're just gonna double crochet across now where I told you I was screwing up is that sometimes I would forget to put a double crochet between the, the crisscrosses here. So there's not one here between here but there definitely is one in the rest of them. So just go right into a space for a double crochet and then go into the crisscrosses one each and you'll do that all the way across. So what you need to do then is that the pattern is telling you that the color is going to end at the end of this row. This is row number four. And I'll show you how to weave in your ends so that you have that in your tool belt for technique and skill. And we're gonna switch off the color and begin our journey again. Make sure you do go into the top of the turning chain, not to a space but right into the chain itself and double crochet. So let's uh, figure out how to fasten off and let's do that next. To fasten off just trim off your yarn and pull through and then put it onto the tapestry needle. So you're gonna pull through and then you're gonna go, so you're going underneath the stitches so you don't impede the edge and you go through a second time and finally a third time is a charm. So you wanna do that each and every time. So this is the end of the row. So when you go to start the next row, you wanna make sure you turn your project and you'll be ready to go once again with your next set. So let's begin row number five. In row number five, you're going to want to start off with some fresh yarn and you wanna come into the top of the ending one and you go right into the actual stitch itself on the edges only. So you're just going to attach and then chain three. So one, two, three. There's your first double. So starting in the next stitch you wanna go into the back loop only. So if you're new to crochet there's two strands that make up a stitch. The strand closest to you is the front loop and the strand away from you is the back loop. So it's kinda, you're kinda splitting the stitch in half and focusing on the back side. And you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across Noticing that I'm going right up over top of the uh, straggler so that I can get buried underneath. And you're gonna go back and forth using this color for four rows. So the first row is going to be this double crochet. Then you're gonna do the crisscross and then double crochet and then change your yarn again. So I'll see you at the end of this row in just a moment. 
When you get to the end of the row don't forget that turning chain and just go right into the normal chain itself and double crochet. Let's so turn your work and begin row number uh, uh, what would this be? This would be row number two. So starting the repeat right now. So starting row number two again which looks like number six which because it's the same you're going to chain a total of four. That's your first treble. You're going to skip the first one and go to the second because there is no space between the edges and the crisscrossing. And in this case it's the first time of crisscrossing so the next one you'll go from the back side. So just lean the project forward. Don't forget to chain one after it. Skip the next stitch and then these two here are going to be where you're gonna play. So you, might, you have to go to the third one away and begin your crisscrossing again. So this will be how you do row number two all over again. So I think it's pretty self explanatory for the remaining of this wrap. So you're just gonna do your four rows. So let me just put this down and there's no border. There's no edging. You could add fringe if you wanted to and this would be how you would do this particular concept and it's actually pretty straightforward. Almost a beginner level project. So have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon right here and enjoy this project and we'll see you again. Bye bye.